have you ever been in this situation you are at a party and it's full of people you don't know and someone is like hey have you met my friend stevie she makes paintings and you're just like yep i make paintings and then the conversation goes into well what kind of art do you make and then you're just like standing there and you're like uh well i make abstract art and you're like looking everywhere except for at the person who's talking to you and then they totally ignore you and then you never get to talk about your art and never make a connection have you ever been at a show and someone comes up to a booth of yours and they're like tell me about what you make and then you can't come up with a phrase to adequately talk about your artwork or have you ever been <laughs> have you ever been at a party and you know zero people and you're just like I need to make a connection with somebody, otherwise I'm just the loser in the corner who is like so introverted it hurts. I'm glad you're here because I have some tips and tricks for you on how to talk about your art to people who don't know you in a way that's not pretentious. This is Brushwork. I was talking to some art friends the other day and they were like, how do you talk about your work without sounding like you're better than everyone else because you make art as maybe part of your living, maybe not, or you just like have a deep connection with your creativity, right? And how do you do that without being like, I'm better than you because I make art and you don't? Or how do you do it in a way that's like kind of confident and you're just like, I make art and it's really cool, can I tell you about it? And how do you forge a connection with a, with a stranger who, you don't know anything about and, and do it in a way that leaves a really good lasting impression because the stranger might be someone who collects your work at some point in the future. You never know, right? So you want to make a good impression. Today I'm going to tell you my tips and tricks on how to talk about your art to anyone. Let's make some hypotheticals. Let's say you're at a party and it's a friend of a friend's party and you know zero people and you're like, I don't want to be the weirdo sitting by themselves in the corner just like twiddling their thumbs because they don't know how to talk to anyone. So I got to talk to somebody here. I got to make a connection. And you know, when you're an extrovert, this is probably easier for you than not. But when you're an introvert like me and you struggle with this, you got to have a strategy. So this is what I do. When I'm at a gathering, I try to look for someone who's already sitting by themselves. I'm looking for another introvert. <laughs> and instead of being like, hi, I'm Stevie and I'm an artist, I like to go up to them and be like, hey, how's it going? And then usually we talk about the party for a second. And then I like to hit them with my favorite question. This question is the best question for making artist friends. And I say, are you creative? Okay, so... When you ask someone if they're creative, many, many possibilities happen. They either tell you about their music that they make or the books they want to write or the paintings they paint or sometimes they go into dance or sports and immediately you have something to talk about. Or they say, they say no, I'm not creative. <laughs> That's more rare than anything. I find that some people are absolutely creative and they just are afraid of it and you're not there to be their therapist, but that's, that's, that's rare. So when that happens, ultimately they will either stop talking to you and leave, or they will be like, are you creative? And then that's your opening to talk about your art. But if they say, yes, I am creative, you're gonna talk about them and what they bring up for the next little while. Maybe they talk about their knitting, maybe talk about the jacket that they made <laughs> and more to the party. This happened to me a couple days ago and I was like, oh my gosh, your, your jacket's amazing. She's like, thanks, I made it. And I was like, stop it's so good anyways you <laughs> you go through that and eventually they're gonna ask you the same question right they're gonna be like are you creative and then this is your opportunity to be like yeah i'm a painter don't just say you're an artist be like i'm a painter or i'm a sculptor or i'm a printmaker and or i make murals and then eventually they're gonna be like let me see some pictures and then you want to be like can I see pictures of your work too and sometimes they'll have it sometimes they won't but this approach is really powerful because instead of it being like yes, I'm a painter and I'm also better than you, or I'm also so cool and have all my work for sale. It's not like you're selling your work. Instead, instead what you're doing is you're saying, yes, I see your creativity for what it is and you see my creativity for what it is. It's harmonious. It's beautiful. You become on the same level. And that kind of bond gets really bright. Eventually someone else is going to overhear your conversation if you're at a gathering like this and they're going to come to you and be like, 
oh, you're talking about this artsy thing? I can also talk about this artsy thing. And like, let the, the tangents go. Like, let them happen and follow them down the rabbit holes. And suddenly you're making friends. You're making people who are going to remember you because you're an artist and it's going to be brilliant. At the end of the day, if you're talking to someone and they were like, yes, I'm creative, try and follow their social media pages, like right then and then, like whip, whip out your phone and be like, you're on Instagram, let me find you. Or you're, you have a website mailing list, I'm going to go find that and, and submit my information. Doing that, you've established a really solid ground for a future relationship. And that's really cool. And you've talked about your art. So that's situation number one, right? You're at a party, ask people, are you creative? You turn it on the person you're talking to first, they'll turn it back to you, you'll be able to talk about your art. Beautiful. When you are thinking about talking about your work, think about the different kinds of ways you're gonna need to talk about it. We just went over a party situation, but let's say you're having an elevator pitch happen, right? Can you describe what it is that you make in a single sentence? For me, I make abstract geometric oil paintings that are vivid in color and subtle in gradient. Just that phrase gives you a lot to go on. I'm liking oil paintings, they're geometric, they're abstract, I use a lot of color, I have a lot of subtlety. Having a single sentence that you can say about your work is really fantastic. Break it down by what it is, what the colors are doing, what the emotion is primarily doing, if there's any subcategories you can talk about your art with, and, and keep niching down until you can say it in a single sentence. And then practice in the mirror saying it over and over again. Say it with confidence to be like, I make abstract geometric oil paintings, right? Okay, boom, you know what I make. Think about the tone of voice you're using. Um, are you kind of almost laughing when you say it? Are you saying it with calmness, being like, I make abstract geometric oil paintings? The, the pitch difference matters with who you're talking about in a serious setting or in a more lively flex, I'm talking to my friends sort of setting. The next sort of section of way to talk about your work is a, a, a couple minutes, right? You having something where it's like a pitch where I'm gonna be like, hi, my name is Stephanie Scott. I got my BFA from Cornish College of the Arts. I make abstract geometric oil paintings. My work is strongly based in color relationships using gradients and symmetry and then breaking it with the patterns and the color play and trying to bring forth an emotion that I'm feeling when I'm painting the image towards the viewer. When you do this, you're almost doing an artist statement. Having something that is a couple sentences long, having something that's a little bit bigger and more thought out. Think about your work, think about your collection. If you do a lot of things, think of it for each one of your different mediums that you use. If you are a potter, you're gonna say things about your pottery. If you're a painter also, you're gonna talk about the paintings as two separate realms, unless they have overlap. When you're practicing coming up with these phrases, I would highly recommend having a friend who's also an artist or perhaps a writer to help you with this. When you wanna talk about your work, you wanna be open to questions about it. People are gonna be asking you, oh, do you paint this thing or this thing or this thing? And you need to be like, no, I paint more this thing and this thing and this thing and be able to expand on it. Have someone question you almost like someone would do an interview where they're like, okay, tell me about the origins of your painting. Tell me about what's pulling you forward. Tell me about what's getting you so excited that you have to be painting this thing, right? And having these conversations with your friends who you trust, who would give you good feedback, it's gonna make you feel a lot more confident about what you're making and talking to people. Practice is truly the key for talking about your art. When you're doing an event, let's say it's an artist talk and you have a coffee shop show with an opening or you have a gallery show, you want to practice doing this talk a couple of times. You're probably gonna talk about a couple of different pieces, go into depth, write about them, see what it's like and practice speaking them several times. The practice is what makes you feel confident. Talking about your art is representing your art to someone who's not seeing what you're making, but they're hearing your voice, right? When you talk about your work with confidence, the significance of your work and the, the strength of the, the work itself becomes higher. You are creating the reputation around your artwork and that's really powerful. So next time you're at a party, you can be like, yeah, I make, these beautiful broken symmetry pieces. And that's, oh, what a, what a delicious statement. <laughs> it's curious, it's fun, it's interesting. When you're talking about your work, try to keep it really simple. You're not gonna use a lot of words like juxtapose, which is, ugh. <laughs> keep it Keep it without the art jargon and keep it simple and concise for people who are not artists to understand. Having a couple of words that are more complicated does create more mystique for people who are not familiar with art but it can confuse people and make them feel like they can't connect with what you're doing. 
when you're starting to talk about your work, think about how you created the work, the process of making it. Talk about how you got inspired to make the piece. Talk about what the piece means now for you. Does it have a emotional significance behind it? People are really going to connect with that. But the most important thing outside of practicing talking about it is that you never talk down about your work. When you talk about your artwork, there's no, oh, I just make oil paintings or I just make pet portraits or I just make landscapes and they're not very good, but I make them. Never ever talk down about your work. You are the representative for your artwork. Your artwork does not speak for itself, which is why we're having this discussion. <laughs> you, you are the one representing it. And if you are the one talking down about it, everyone else you're talking to is also gonna to start to look down upon it, even more so than they might have already. You can't control how other people are gonna think about your work or how they're gonna feel about it, but you can control how you begin to represent your artwork. When you say, my work is powerful and interesting and really cool, <laughs> people are gonna feed on that energy. And if you talk about it in a way that's like, oh, I just kind of make this thing, it's fine. It doesn't have any significance. It's going to seem lackluster because it is lackluster. It's going to make your work feel less valuable than it is. And that sucks. That's that's not fun. The amount of times I've talked to people who make art whose own lack of confidence about what they're making shows up in the way they talk about their art. It's it's really disappointing because I might go and see someone's work and think, oh, this is beautiful. This is amazing. This is so cool. I want to have it in my house. But the minute the artist starts talking to me about all of its faults, all of its flaws that I might not be able to see, but they see, I'm like, oh, you're right. I shouldn't try to acquire this piece. In fact, the way that I think about this piece is now wrong because you've just told me that all the good things I was thinking about it are terrible and incorrect. You see what I'm saying? So let's say I look at a painting and I've got this one here in the video behind me where I'm just like, okay, this painting is magical. It's got all of these tones of brown. Each tone of brown is different than the other. There's gonna be hundreds of them. I'm like, is this 1000 shades of brown? I like it. <laughs> it's based on the movie Dune. It's a commission. I'm so excited about it. It's got really cool pattern work and some gold leaf aspects to it. It's gonna be sick. Okay, so you see my excitement about this piece, right? So now I'm gonna talk about it as if I'm not sure. Yeah, so I made a lot of mistakes in the gradients going upper left to the lower right, and I had to go over them a couple of times. And, you know, going over the paint kind of left some smears and it's just not perfectly straight, like it's kind of uneven, but I'm a human and I can't make anything perfect. And it's just, it's okay. It took me a long time. I'm like way overdue in delivering it, that's true. And, you know, hopefully my person likes it, but if they don't, then I guess I'll just destroy it. So you just took a look at my work in progress here. And the first one I was talking about confidence and I was talking about how excited I was. And the second one I was saying how terrible it was and how I'll probably throw it away if my client doesn't like it. When you talk poorly about your work, when you're just like, I guess this is okay, I guess this is fine. Or the worst, if you say, I don't like what I'm making and you're presenting it to the world, don't do that. <laughs> you, you must speak positively about your work even if you have terrible dark thoughts about it, even if you are not confident in what you're making, even if you are thinking, I wish I hadn't made this or I wish I hadn't put it in a show or I wish, that I had a different theme or I picked different colors or blah, 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 whatever it is that you're having doubts about. You cannot speak it to someone who's a stranger who doesn't know your work because they will take that feeling that you're putting out, that dejection and that resistance to liking the work, and they will they will take it because you've, you've represented it that way. Does that make sense? This works in the way you're speaking, but also when I say speaking, I mean in captions online, in, in when you're talking about it anywhere on the internet, when you're talking about it on Instagram or on Twitch or whatever, when you start talking about how you don't like your work that way, it matters a lot. You are damaging your own reputation by doing that. Now, this isn't to say you should never talk negatively about your work, but you should do it to trusted people, not to the public, <laughs> right? So this should be your friends who are helping you critique your work. These should be your confidants, your mentors, people who help you improve. If you have doubts, you should talk about them. Just know who you're talking to. This shouldn't be a stranger at a party. This shouldn't be everyone on the internet. 
and you truly need to be careful about how you talk about it. Talking about your work is delicate. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of practice. And to do it right is to make your work more worthy of being here in the world. And it is. <laughs> People want to see your art, so keep making it and keep talking about it. If you're having a hard time talking about your work and you're not really sure how to approach speaking about your work, think about the feeling you had when you made it. So I'm thinking about my Dune painting behind me and I'm thinking about how much I loved the movie and I hear the Hans Zimmerman music in the background when it's when I'm painting it. I just hear it. I'm just like, oh, this is epic. and This is cool. When you start thinking about the, the motives behind the piece as you're speaking about them to a stranger, that feeling will come through and it'll change your language and how you're speaking and how your hands are moving and how excited you are. And that excitement is infectious and it's very cute. <laughs> so so think about the, the passion behind it when you're talking to someone instead of maybe the anxiety you have about talking to that person. Next, I want to talk about speaking to someone who you think could make a big difference in your artistic life, right? Someone who might own a gallery, someone who writes great journals about art, someone who is an uh, interviewee on a podcast, perhaps. Talking to someone who you think, oh, this person might like my work so much that they might have something good to do with my future, that can be nerve wracking. That can be, that can create some anxiety and going in with confidence to that. I know it makes me nervous and I, I know it causes a lot of like, okay, this person could be super cool. When you get to the case, when you're like, I don't know if I can talk to this person and have a calmness about me and make them feel impressed with me, which is what I want. I want them to be impressed. You gotta remember that they are simply human. And if they like your work, they're gonna like your work. And if they won't like it, then they won't. It's very rare for people just to say something nasty to you outright. And it's even rarer for them to be like, you do something so cool, here's an opportunity. <laughs> like sometimes it takes time. And sometimes it takes iterations of meeting that person. So don't think you need to put the pressure all on that first meeting where you're like, I can make one good first impression and that's all that matters. The truth is first impressions do matter a lot, but what matters more is the continuing relationship after that. Are you putting an effort post that first meeting into getting them to get to know you and your work? That's what matters more. So think about that when you're meeting someone, you're just like, can't wait to present my work to this gallery or I can't wait to talk to this one artist at a at a party that we both happen to be at and it's exciting and I want them to like me. You're not responsible for how they get to feel about you. You're responsible for how you present yourself. And that's all that you can have control over. Is that comforting? I hope it is. <laughs> that's how I think about it when I'm meeting people who I'm just like, oh, this person is cool and I want them to like me. <laughs> If I know someone who I want to impress is going to be at an event I'm going to, I try to think of ways before the event for us to be able to connect again later. So even before I've even met them a single time, I try to come up with a situation where it would be convenient for us to meet again. So one thing I like about Seattle is that we've got first Thursdays. So if I ever meet someone who's an artist or in our community, I can be like, are you going to First Thursday next month? Because there's First Thursdays every single month. And usually they say yes and I'll be like, I would love to chat with you again. What galleries are you going to hit up? We should meet up. It'll be really cool. Or I can be like, I've got this podcast now. I can be like, hey, you want to be on the podcast? It would be super cool. And then sometimes they're like, yeah. And sometimes they're like, no, but that's fine. <laughs> but you can, you can come up with other ways for you to meet them again. And if you ever meet someone and they're also an artist and you love them so much, Ask them if they do mentorship. Ask them if they would look over your work sometime. Ask them if you can do a studio visit. Try to create networking opportunities for yourself. To create moments where you can go and meet someone again after a bigger public event and talk to them about their work and talk to them about you. One thing that really works for talking to anyone about your work is being interested in them. <laughs> so not interested in you, but interested in the person you're talking to. And this creates a an affinity for you and your work. This works for so many things. You go on a first date, you wanna ask questions about the person you're dating and not just talk about yourself the full time. This works the same way for talking about art. Ask the person about them before you talk about yourself. It's gonna work out. So a brief recap. When you're talking to other people about your work, first talk about them, then talk about the process. Don't 
Let your insecurities show. <laughs> no talking you down about your own work. Try and make a connection for the future and have fun with it. And then also practice. Practice a lot. Practice all the time. Practice with one person. Practice with your friends. Practice with strangers at events. Practice in front of the mirror. Practice with as many people as you can and talk about your artwork a lot. Try to have a one sentence statement that you can use that really sums up what you're making if you don't have your artwork in front of you. And if you do have the artwork in front of you, look for meaning, look for process, look for things that people can connect with. And inevitably when someone is like, oh, my aunt makes artwork like that, don't get offended. <laughs> There's always someone's aunt. Thank you for listening to Freshwork Friends and Foes. My name is Stephanie Scott. You can find me at stephaniescott.art on Instagram. That's also the website and where the podcast lives. I'll see you next time. Make good choices. Goodbye. <laughs>